class is in session. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I have said it. Praise God. So this morning I woke up and I'm just doing my morning routine and whatnot. <clears throat> And I go online and I'm checking some stuff on this social media website. And I see that a friend of mine posted something, I don't know if it was last night or this morning too, which said something that I don't agree with. And this is basically what, what his, his post said. God gives, but he also takes away. So don't get too attached to material to the things that he gives you because don't get too attached to things that you have because they're not that important because one some one, at one point he's going to take it away <clears throat> so i'm reading that and I'm, I'm thinking no this guy's wrong and i was going to post something back as a, as a, as a comment Hey, here's an argument to destroy basically your statement. But it's now nah, I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> so when I was at work, I'm sitting at my desk and I'm checking some paperwork, and God starts speaking to me. And he's like, Nope, you have to say something. And the scripture that I was gonna put this morning as a comment on this guy's post was the same scripture that came back to my mind when God was talking to me <clears throat> when I was at work. So I, I immediately started looking it up and all that. So I'm going to read it to you. And it's Romans chapter 11, verses 25 through 32. And I'm going to read it from a few translations. This is from the King James. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet, he, ye yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now, now not believed that through the, your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Now I'm going to read that from the Amplified Bible. <clears throat> Lest you be self-opinionated, wise in your own conceits. I do not want you to miss this hidden truth and mystery, brethren. A hardening insensibility has temporarily befallen the part of Israel to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant, my agreement with them when I shall take away their sins. From the point of view of the gospel, good news, they, the Jews at present, are enemies of God, which is for your advantage and benefit. But from the point of view of God's choice of election of divine selection, they are still the beloved, dear to him, for the sake of their forefathers. For God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them when once they are given, and he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. Just as you were once disobedient and rebellious toward God, but now have obtained his mercy through their disobedience, so they also now are being disobedient when you are receiving mercy, that they in turn may one day, through the mercy you are enjoying, also receive mercy that they may share the mercy which has been shown to you through you as messengers of the gospel to them. For God has consigned, penned up all men to disobedience 
only that he may have mercy on them all alike. I'm going to read from the message translation. I want to lay all this out on the table as clearly as I can, friends. This is complicated. It would be easy to misinterpret what's going on and arrogantly assume that you're royalty and they're just rabble out on their ears for God, for good. But that's not it at all. This hardness on the part of inside Israel toward God is temporary. Its effect is to open things up to all the outsiders so that we have so that we end up with a full house. Before it's all over, there will be a complete Israel, as it is written. A champion will stride down from the mountain of Zion. He'll clean house in Jacob. And this is my commitment to my people, removal of their sins. From your point of view, as you hear and embrace the good news of the message, it looks like the Jews are God's enemies. But look at, but look at from the long range perspective of God's overall purpose. They remain God's oldest friends. God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty, never canceled, never rescinded. There was a time not so long ago when you were on the outs with God, but then the Jews slammed the door on him and things opened up for you. Now they are on the outs, but with the door held wide open for you, they have a way back in. In one way or another, God makes sure that we all experience what it means to be outside so that he can personally open the door and welcome them back in. God takes stuff away, yes, but it's none of the gifts that he gives us. He takes away our sins. He takes away our pain, our suffering, Thank you. our sickness, anything that is a product of this fallen world that we live in or poor choices that we make when we repent and go to him, he takes it away. Amen. But he will never take away any gift that he gives us. Right. Psalm 145 verse 9 says, The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. Psalm 100 verse 5, For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. James chapter 1 verse 17 says every good and gift every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change what's the greatest gift that God has given man mankind his only son for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life why would God give you something that is going to bring you close to him to then take it away because it's bored. It's not going to do that. If someone wants to give you something as big as his only son so we, through him, can get close to him, that's just right there proof that he will never take anything away from you that he has given you. Amen. So Amen. that's what I wanted to share. So with that, I open the floor for questions. <laughs> Why is the sky blue? Huh? Why is the sky blue? Well, that's actually, no, I'm kidding. There's, I can give you the scientific explanation. There was a song that we used to sing, and I don't remember who it was, and I'm not trying to, I mean, I don't know who, who brought it up, but um, it was like a Matthew West song or something. Gives and takes away. Yeah. That's a matter of Okay, so we quit saying it, right? Because it says that. Somebody said something about it. I think I did. Uh, I don't think it was you. Okay, so, didn't somebody say something and then. Oh, yeah, somebody did say something about it. <coughs> okay, so. I don't know the full lyrics to the song, but I have to believe. Blessed be your name. Yeah, okay, so I have to believe. It's now, I don't know what Matt Redman's background is, and just because he sings Christian songs and they're on the radio doesn't mean he's God's gift. I get that. But I have to believe. So with that, it's like sometimes we're afraid of things that we don't understand. Right. So in that song, like I said, I don't, I don't remember the full lyrics to the song, but i got to believe that perhaps... 
that's exactly what he was saying is exactly what he meant. Right. God gives and he does take away. What's he take away? Well, he takes away things that he never gave us to begin with. Things that come from the enemy. Things that come from our own mind or flesh. Uh, people around us that we allow to influence us in different ways, right? God doesn't bring us pain, correct? Am I wrong? Here's where, where I think it's coming from. I've seen a lot of people say, my mother-in-law, for example, she got a diagnosis a few weeks ago. She was complaining about it on Facebook. And someone says something to her, and she says, oh, you know, I'm not worried. God does not give us burdens that we cannot carry. No, that's, that's, that's an incorrect statement because whatever pain you're going through, suffering, emotional situation, financial situation, whatever, God is not testing you. He uses whatever situation comes from what's happening because what's been carrying over since Adam says, yes, give me some of the apple, Eve. Uh, you know, it happens in our lives. So another example, I was watching a TV show the other day something happened to this character and she's crying and her mom says you have to remember this honey God created sin so he could show us his mercy no <laughs> he didn't create sin <clears throat> so I'm just sitting there I've seen that show about three times already the entire series and this is the first time that I've actually noticed that line and I'm like no this is wrong <clears throat> but there's this collective mentality, you know, in, in, in mankind that when bad things ha happen to us, and it, it's, it's basically the Job mentality, yeah. though he's might me or his mold me or, how, or whatever the word is, I'll still, you know, praise him. I, I don't know how the scripture goes, but what, was, what, was, what did Job believe? That God gave him whatever he was going through. So a lot of people still think that way. And I think that's where it's coming from. But the lesson of Job is just the opposite of that. Yep. Yeah. It was the enemy that stole and killed and destroyed, and God gave him back yep. threefold. Right. His buddy. It wasn't God who took anything away. <clears throat> but people don't believe that. They, they, or at least they choose not to believe well, religion that. religion teaches you yeah. that God takes away, that God tr tests you and tries you and refines <clears throat> you. Man-made versions of what God already created. 
too hard. Religion makes you think that in so many different ways, so then people just stop and throw up their hands. Yeah. Instead of, I, I mean, it's so easy, it's so <coughs> simple. I mean, it really is, not just because I've been doing it for 20 years, it's just because it took 15 to figure out where I'm at now, right? So for 10 years, I was an idiot because I'm telling people you're going to hell unless you do this and that and this and that. And then when you're done doing that, don't forget to do that. And then do this. And then, well, then you still got to keep doing that. No, it isn't about, but see, that's it. People think it's about <coughs> them. It's not about us. It has nothing to do with us except for saying yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I was, like, I was talking to my brother yesterday, and and I've never claimed that I know the Bible from the very first to the very last word, <clears throat> or that I know the name of every single book or anything. But, you know, over time, since I said, yes, Lord, I want you in my life, you know, he's been revealing things to me. And it's hard for people to see someone that is living according to the to the word so i'm talking to my brother yesterday and we're talking about my my wife ariadna and and our situation and he he asked me this question he says so do you want to get back together with her and i said yes because she's the woman that goes god chose for me she's my soulmate he's like but i just don't understand how can you be so calm in this whole situation and i said because when God reveals to you the truth that's in his word, like when Jesus said, I am the truth, you know, the only thing that you can do is just rest in him. And you have to be at peace because there, there is no other way. Right. That's where that peace comes from. So, Amen. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's Anyone want to say, John? Yeah, I have a woman who calls me and wanted to mention her for prayer for her body. Uh, she's getting up there where we're all headed, you know. <laughs> a lot of cares. So it uh, takes a lot of strength to keep going, and that's what she needs. Is, uh, more strength and abilities to move around. And these days the Lord's right at home, but until then, hopefully she can uh, function to a level that's good, you know, and that's where she has to be institutionalized for the way, you know, mm -hmm. and so many are, you know, it's not, I don't know how practical it is, but God can do anything. Yeah. It was, uh, I tell you, I All right. Well, let's pray, but let's join hands and stand together. James, come here. For my wife, too. Yeah. She's uh, doing much better today, so, you know, thank you, Jesus. So, what's this I heard about? Hula skirts? Hula shirts. Hula shirts. Oh, okay. I thought it was about a hula skirt. I'm like, no.
heal. Pray to them, Lord. We just pray that it catches up to your healing power and your work, Lord God. Your face, Lord Jesus, to us, you God. We thank you so much. I just continue to pray for my wife, Lord God. She gets the dose of healing. I know that it is that dose of healing. I know that it is that dose of healing.
of the Lord.
sleep and her slumber to reveal your holy kingdom with the spirit that's within the holy spirit that's within
felt your wind Sing out the birds in flight, soaring in the air, lying down beneath the stars. I feel your presence there. I love to stand on the ocean. Listening to the river, watering the earth, the fragrance of a rose in bloom, a new birth and How could I say?
cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and a view of my sin washed away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now. We'll take another, Lord. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad. 
prayer in all things. Reveal yourself to those who don't know you. Show them your goodness, Lord. Reveal to them your true nature, Father, that you are a good God, that you hear, that you don't forget. You comfort us, that you don't make us sad. God, show those who don't know you who you are, that they can enter into your rest. I can't see competition, I can't see hierarchy, I can't see pride or prejudice or abuse of authority, I can't see lust for power, I can't see manipulation, I can't see rage or anger or selfish ambition.
inheritance from our Father he gives us, and it's a revelation of who he is, a new facet, a new color, a new revelation of his grace. And each of us got different revelations, different gems, different colors. I saw rubies, I saw emeralds, I saw amethysts, I saw diamonds. All of us, different colors, different revelations of who he is and his grace. Glory. As an inheritance, not a reward, not a reward for your works, but as inheritance Hallelujah. from our Father who store up all the riches in heaven. Glory, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Just like that. Just like the robe mm -hmm. of the prodigal son and the mm -hmm. ring. Yeah. The ring. It was in his inheritance. Well, there was like a cloud that descended and it just dropped a jewel on the hand of every single person. Glory. I know Mark has a remark. Mark has a remark. <laughs> I mean, it's Mark again, right? <laughs> remark. just bummed me out. But, you know, the more that I thought about it, it's not, it's not a, it, it was me. It wasn't about anybody else, and I tried to, you know, put that off on whoever else. Well, there's times that I'm not here either. And yet, does that mean God's not here when I'm not here? You know? So, we all go through, if you will, suffer growing pains, and in many different ways, right? Personally, collectively, mm -hmm. um, but um, rejoice, because no matter what, when he said it's finished, it is finished. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not ate up over the numbers games just for the sake of having more people here, but, you know, like to see people come, um, that just don't have a clue, you know, and um, but yet have questions and have it, you know, I believe wholeheartedly this is an extremely inviting place, more so inviting than any other body that I've ever been a part of, because it's it's from A to Z. I mean, it, it's all across the board. So this is an extremely inviting place, and. Believe wholeheartedly that um, you know, as we continue to grow and suffer the growing pains, you know, with one hand you say, "Well, I won't, you know, I won't have to, have to, to go through growing pains," but I think it's, I think it's an always thing because as more people come in, so what? If Ten more come in, that's it. No. Oh, <laughs> it's all. Awesome. I just want people to be to feel this, to be a part of this, just for the sake of being part of it, and see what God can do. Thank you.
to everybody individually what they do. And you know what? When they walk through the door, thank you, Jesus. But, uh, you know, just continue to pray, pray, pray. Amen. And uh, don't forget Sally. Keep her in prayer. Um, she's already healed. Her body just got to catch up with it. Amen. Amen. And uh, just continue strength, uh, renewing, uh, revigoring uh, the pastor. And, and that those channels remain open, which I know they were, but they just they keep growing. I think it's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else? I said that too. I'm going to get my ears back to the city county area. So I can get better for what they would have. And I assume you might appreciate that. It's pretty rough. You couldn't hear. I couldn't sleep for three days or night because that was really unreal. I have never, ever been like that. Jesus' name. You pray. Encouragement to everyone that we come across to yeah. just know that God is real and <clears throat> He is there for each and every one of us. And uh, you know, pray for questions. Pray for questions to come. Right. That's the door that opens. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. 